I also want to congratulate all of you essay winners. Uh, amazingly, I was governor when we started this 30 years ago. So it's kind of neat to come back. I remember we used to do this actually in the governor's office in the early years. But um, this is a great program. And it's one that uh, I'm glad to see uh, we continue to have generations of students uh, involved in. This year's theme, as you've already heard, is celebrating women of character, courage, and commitment. And I think every one of us uh, recognizes a woman that really had a big influence in our life. Oftentimes it's our own mother or grandmother or someone else, a, a great teacher that we had that inspired us. Uh, these are just a few of the many women that, that shaped the lives of the people of Iowa. And this state is really blessed to have a lot of very strong women that have had significant influence. Um, my own mother, Rita Branstead, was a Jewish, uh, a Jewish uh, mother who um, really instilled in me and, and my brother the importance of a good education. She used to say, get a good education because they can't take that away from you. And education opens great doors of opportunity for everyone. So, and of course now we're really focusing on STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math. Lieutenant Governor is helping lead that effort with another uh, strong woman, uh, Mary Andrenga, who is uh, the, the CEO of Vermeer Manufacturing and the first woman that was president of the National Association of Manufacturers. So we do have a lot of women that play important roles in our state and uh, others that have influenced really generations. I'm proud to say that we have many strong women who are department heads, of course. San Wang is here from the Department of Human Rights. We're in the building of the Department of Cultural Affairs and Mary County is our youngest department head. And she is, in, and on the, as we were visiting with a company uh, uh, that's uh, dealing with, with some issues uh, with this department, uh, we were told by, actually, I'll tell you the company. The company is this Iowa fertilizer company that's building this new uh, big fertilizer plant down in Lee County. And uh, the manager of that uh, project, and they're up to 1,000, they're up to 1,000 workers and hiring 30 more every day. They'll be up to 2,500, I think, by next summer. But he was saying what a great job Mary County was doing and how, how enjoyable it was to work with her and how she was a real problem solver. And when you're governor, it's kind of nice to hear that about your departments and about your department heads and the job that she's doing. But uh, what she does and what San does on a daily basis are very important. We have Courtney Kai Decker at the Department of Revenue. That's another important agency uh, of state government that collects the taxes. And we want to make sure that treat, people are treated fairly in that process as well. And Debbie Durham heads our De Economic Development Authority, which is really so important to attracting business and jobs. Teresa Whalert is the Director of Workforce Development that helps uh, place people in jobs. And, and, and so we have a lot of really key women in, in important positions. I had the opportunity this year when our uh, State Auditor, David Vout, uh, received a very prestigious appointment to head up the uh, Government Accounting Standards Board, which sets accounting standards for all state and local government. This is a national board and, and a very prestigious position, and he's got a seven-year appointment to chair it. So then I wanted another CPA for state auditor, and I chose Mary Mosman, who happens to be a CPA and also the first woman state auditor we've had in our state's history. She was also a, a county auditor in Story County, elected three times there, and um, also another woman that's doing a great job. And you're going to hear later from, I'm, I'm kind of the warm-up act, for the lieutenant governor, my partner. Uh, and, and, and she was a county treasurer in uh, Clark County for 14 years. And uh, I know that she received an, the county treasurer's, National County Treasurer's Organization honors one county treasurer each year with their top county treasurer in the United States. And she received that award, in addition to being the leader of the Iowa County Treasurer's Association. So um, I like to say that I met my match in terms of energy enthusiasm and passion to serve the people of Iowa. So before I turn it over to the Lieutenant Governor, 
for the main address, I do have a, a, a proclamation. It's one of the things the governor gets to do is sign proclamations. In fact, my next event after this is to go back to the Capitol, and I've got six more proclamations to do this afternoon. <laughs> but, uh, and I was just, the Lieutenant Governor and I were up in Greene County earlier today, and they, uh, we signed a proclamation there, and they were designated as the first, uh, uh, we have a new program, which we call Home Base Iowa, to attract military people that are coming out of the military to Iowa, and they're the first county to become a uh, Home Base Iowa count, a community. So I have a proclamation for Women's History Month, and I'll read it and sign it. Uh, whereas the accomplishments and lives of women in diverse cultures and backgrounds, past and present, need to be highlighted and studied through educational programs such as Write Women Back Into History essay contests for 6th through ninth grade students. And whereas women's history as a visible element in all of our studies of history provides all of our citizens an important perspective for looking at the past, understanding the present, and imagining the future. Whereas the Iowa Constitution has been amended to read, all men and women are by nature in free and equal and have certain inalienable rights. And whereas the Iowa Constitution, excuse me, the Iowa Commission on the Status of Women and the Office of, of the Iowa Department of Human Rights as recognized and publicized through the Iowa Women's Hall of Fame and Write Women Back Into History essay contest, the historical contributions made by Iowa women. Now, therefore, I, Terry E. Branstead, Governor of the State of Iowa, do hereby proclaim the month of March 2014 as Women's History Month in Iowa, and I urge all Iowans to recognize and appreciate the accomplishments of women in our state during this month of March, and actually all year round. So I'm proud to sign this on this, the 13th day of March. <laughs> Phyllis, I'll give this to you. you Thank are. you. There you go. Thank you. And now I'm pleased to turn it over to Lieutenant Governor Kim Reynolds. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess Son's going to do that, so go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. Um, I would like, first of all, to add my congratulations to our standing winners today and to their parents and teachers, uh, and our gratitude to our sponsors, our staff, and volunteers who have helped put this all together. So on behalf of the Department of Human Rights, I want to thank you for helping us fulfill our mission to empower underrepresented Iowans to participate fully in economic, social, and cultural opportunities available to all Iowans. I uh, also want to once again acknowledge our staff, Kristen Corey and Sanjita Pardhan from Status of Women, our Deputy Director and Administrator from CAS, Heidi Smith, as well as our Public Information Officer Danielle Plowman, who's recording all of this for us today. Um, today we are honored to have Lieutenant Governor Kim Reynolds with us, and it's my pleasure to introduce her this afternoon. Lieutenant, Reynolds, Lieutenant Governor Reynolds grew up in St. Charles, Iowa, and resides in Osceola, where she has served as County Treasurer and State Senator. Once elected Lieutenant Governor, she got right to work. Lieutenant Governor Reynolds served as the co-chair to the Governor's STEM Advisory Council, along with Vermeer Manufacturing President Mary Aldringer. She is also chair of the STEM Connectors STEM Food and Ag Council. The Lieutenant Governor is actively involved in the National Lieutenant Governors Association, serving as treasurer on the executive committee and as education chair for the Aerospace State Association. She has led numerous trade and fact-finding missions for Iowa, visiting China, South Korea, Thailand, Germany, Vietnam, and the Philippines. Lieutenant Governor Reynolds and her husband Kevin have three daughters and six grandchildren. Please help me welcome Lieutenant Governor Kim Reynolds. Well, good afternoon, and thank you, San, for that nice introduction. And I am so pleased to be here and to be part of the 30th annual Right Women 
Back Into History Essay Contest. You know, celebrating Women's History Month with events such as the Essay Contest is an important way to increase awareness of the significant contributions made by Iowa women. As I thought about this year's theme, Celebrating Women of Character, Courage, and Commitment, one of the women that came to mind for me and that I admire is Facebook Chief Operating Officer Cheryl Sandberg. Cheryl has been ranked one of the 50 most powerful women in business in Fortune Magazine and honored as one of Time Magazine's 100 most influential people in the world. And the thing that I really admire about Cheryl is she is continually encouraging young women and others to seek challenges, take risk, pursue their goals with gusto. Cheryl once said that we can each divine ambition and progress for ourselves. The goal is to work toward a world where expectations are not set by the stereotypes that hold us back but by our personal passion, talents, and interest. Each of the essay winners that we're recognizing today wrote about a woman who have these important qualities. And that is what today's theme is all about. How do we encourage women to clearly define their ambition and move beyond some of the stereotypical expectations? You know, as the Lieutenant Governor, I get the amazing opportunity to travel all across the state and to talk with young women and just students in general. And one topic, as the Governor alluded to, that's really important to me is to encourage these young girls, underrepresented, underserved, and just all students, to really consider fields in science, uh, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And as you'll hear today, careers in these fields can have such a tremendous impact in their lives and in their future. I also read in today's program that one of the essays featured a teacher who is helping a visually impaired student learn to use technology to overcome obstacles. I got There she is. I got to meet her earlier. So that is just such a perfect example of how leadership in the area of technology can positively change someone's life. You'll also hear about an Iowa's first female doctor. While it's not uncommon to see a woman in our local doctor's office or in the operating room, that stereotype was kind of broken down because one woman showed character, courage, and commitment. She was not afraid to set a new standard. Another new standard or statistic that I hope to set is the number of women entering STEM-related fields. As the governor and I visit schools across the state or we go to competitions, one of the most inspiring things that I've seen is really teams of young women and in, in, in our students working together, competing to build a robot, solve challenging problems, or design a playground for the school, uh, for that school. It's exciting to see them collaborating, leading, and discovering their love for science and math. And that's certainly the goal of the governor's STEM initiative, to increase student interest and achievement in STEM and helping students start to see the relevance and the opportunities that's available to them in those disciplines. STEM careers offer quality jobs and are projected to grow four times faster. STEM workers earn 26% more than other workers and right now 24% of women work in STEM related fields. So let's work together to increase that statistic and set a new standard. A first-rate STEM education, as we talk about a lot, is a ticket to a promising future, and the Governor's STEM Advisory Council is determined to help position students to make the most of that promise. We know that in order to fill those careers of tomorrow, students must be prepared to be critical thinkers, able to work through challenges, challenging problems, and again to realize the opportunity that those sk skills provide them. A strong STEM education will ensure that we have students on the right track to compete, to innovate, and to succeed. In fact, yesterday the governor and I were in Marshalltown, and that was the second of six STEM town halls that were holding across the state of Iowa. And after we did a chemistry experiment and we saw some of the scale-ups that we were working on, uh, we had the third, uh, third graders, we gave them the opportunity to ask us some questions. And so after we got past the age question, which was one of the second ones answered. They wanted to know how old both the governor and I were, which is a delicate question for women. I mean, I really, really. But after that, um, the next question came from a young, a young third grader, a young lady that was sitting down on the ground, and she raised her hand, and she said, uh, I just want to know how you think this STEM thing is going to play out, because uh, I want to be a scientist. 
third grader. I just went over and hugged her. I was so excited. And another young lady, she says, well, you know, after seeing that experiment and, and using these programs, she just made a statement. She says, you know, I want to be an entrepreneur and I want to own my own business. I can hardly spell entrepreneur. And this third grader wants to be one and wants to have her own business. So this is the kind of stuff that we're seeing all across the state. We're growing awareness. Uh, we're seeing more and more students participating in high quality STEM programs. The first year we reached 40,000 students across the state of Iowa. I'm so happy to say that in the second year we've, we've reached almost 100,000 students and we're going to keep working on that. And we're starting to get results too. We want metrics in place to make sure that what we're doing is working. And for the students who participated in the first round of these high quality scale-up programs, um, we've, they're scoring higher on their assessments and the interest is starting to go up. So we really are raising awareness. We want to continue to redefine STEM education so it stretches beyond the classroom by putting more emphasis on school to business partnerships. A couple of examples of some great things that are happening, these are really organic initiatives that are happening across the straight state. There's a company up in Northwest Iowa Polaris and they're working with Spirit Lake and Okoboji High School students and those students are allowed to spend two weeks learning about lean manufacturing on the factory floor. They show up at 8.15, they work on projects, and they punch out at 3.30, and they're getting credits for that. In Waukee next year, the, school, uh, next year, the high school student will work with businesses for two and a half hours every day with insurance, with medicine, with interactive design. So and that's another opportunity for them to see what that looks like and how relevant it is to take the math and science. In fact, one of the kids for, that did the Polaris thing and said it gave math a purpose. So I'm passionate about STEM, as you can see, but another way that we can make a difference is through mentorship. And mentors play such a critical role in coaching and guiding and shaping Iowa's young people. And again, there are many examples all across Iowa that serve as best practices for others to consider. Uh, I talked about this last year, but it's such a good story, I wanted to bring it up again. And it's like the two Waterloo teachers who used the 2012 STEM scale-up programs to form First Lego League Team 935 GIRL. Now GIRL is an acronym and it starts for generous, it stands for Generous Innovative Robotic Leaders. Team GIRL continues to take Northeast Iowa Lego competitions by storm and I'm really not just talking about their pink tutus or their contagious spirit uh, that's turning heads. These girls, they have spent hours outside of the classroom learning and testing the fundamentals of engineering and technology with their mentor. Uh, Team Girls certainly was effective in taking female engineering to new heights. And mentoring can be done in other ways too with businesses in interest. Uh, industry. Events such as Introduce a Girl to Engineering Day. John Deere has supported these events in various communities all across Iowa. And the goal really is just to provide a fun and an interactive way to engage students in hands-on engineering activities. All it takes is one person with the passion and the dedication to make a profound difference in a student's life. To help give young students the exposure, the confidence, the passion, and the desire to pursue their dreams. I just want to mention a couple because our own department is doing some pretty exciting things too. The Department of Human Rights has a couple of great programs which really empower youth to find their voice um, and become involved in the legislative process through the Iowa Youth Congress and the State of Iowa Youth Advisory Council. Uh, both of those two groups have worked with the governor's office uh, in really partnering on important topics such as preventing uh, bullying in our schools all across the state of Iowa. So they've really worked on legislation. They've really rallied young people to take ownership of this initiative to make sure that when our kids are in school that they're in a safe environment so they can get a great education. So I just want to, again, thank you for allowing us to be a part of this. I appreciate um, uh, all of the work that you have put in, and congratulations again on being selected. So congratulations to all of you, and thank you very much. Women have always made significant contributions to the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But historically, those contributions have not been recognized as readily or publicly as those of men. In sponsoring prizes for the best essays about women in STEM fields, our programs hope to further our efforts to ignite the interest 
confidence, and engagement of Iowa youth in STEM fields, while also bringing recognition to the women whose work inspired these students to write about them. In that effort, the ISU Program for Women in Science and Engineering is awarding $100 to the two first place essays in the STEM category, which will be given to the winners after the ceremony today. In the sixth and seventh grade category, the first place winner is Sid McRae. Sid wrote this essay about Iowa's first female doctor, Nancy Maria Hill. From a very young age, I've wanted to become a doctor, particularly a neonatologist, and Nancy Hill is a great role model for me. She's taught me that sometimes we need to go outside of our comfort zone because the risks may be worth the rewards. Nancy has showed me that no one is better than anyone else because they're male. Becoming a doctor, he'll open the door for other women to enter medical professions. I know that I don't have to do what is considered normal and can change the world in my own ways, not necessarily the ways people think I should. She inspired me to follow my dreams if at a certain point they seem impossible or unrealistic. Please help me congratulate Sid McRae. In the eighth and ninth grade category, the first place winner is Nisha Barnhill. Nisha wrote an essay about a vision instructor, Trina Erickson, who is with us today, Trina? Would you stand for a moment, please, Trina? <laughs> Nisha stated that Trina makes a difference in students' lives because she, become, she comes to local schools and students don't have to go live at the Braille school. Blind students in Iowa used to live at the Braille school all year. Trina works with each student almost every day and helps them learn anything that sighted students learn. I and other visually impaired students learn skills that we can use in college. In the past, visually impaired students often weren't able to get jobs that paid well and that they enjoyed. Trina has taught me and other students to use all kinds of tools and software so we can have any career we choose. Please help me congratulate Nisha Barnhill. And at this time, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Dr. Christine Bruce. Thanks, Carol. Well, in addition to receiving the monetary prize from Iowa State uh, Program for Women in Science and Engineering, the University of Iowa Women in Science and Engineering Program would like to supplement with a packet of books. We have done this uh, cooperatively with Iowa State for 20 years, at least. Um, and it's a real honor and privilege to be here with all of these incredible young, women, young people. So. To Sid McRae, again, sixth and seventh grade first place winner in the STEM category. I am giving Nobel Prize Women in Science by Sharon Birch McGrain, which is a wonderful book outlining the histories of many women. Um, 65 Short Mysteries You Solve with Science by Eric and Natalie Yoder. Seventh grade Brain Quest, keep it in your car because that's not downtime, that's good think time. Top Secret Rosies, a DVD by Leanne Erickson about uh, women mathematicians who were called upon during the Second World War to, uh, and they ended up actually being the first computer programmers. Very, very interesting DVD. And last but not least, one of the uh, top of the list of the STEM category for books, we have Science Experiments You Can Eat. <laughs> so enjoy. 
And for Anisha Barnhill, eighth and ninth grade first place winner, also the Nobel Prize winning uh, Women in Science, Top Secret Rosies, A Feeling for the Organism by Evelyn Fox Keller, Perplexing Puzzles and Tantalizing Teasers to Keep You uh, Up With Your Math Skills, and last but not least, you're entering high school. And one of the myths we try to dispel is that young women who go into science aren't fun, aren't excited, aren't witty. So the last book I am giving you is called Witty Words from Wise Women. <laughs> Ellen wrote about Ada Hayden. Ada Hayden is um, an Iowa Women's Hall of Fame inductee, a conservationist, and a naturalist who strove to protect Iowa prairies. Uh, what Ellen wrote was this. Innumerable Iowa women should be acknowledged and written into history for their vigorous efforts to make Iowa a better place. One such person is Dr. Ada Hayden, a determined conservationist who strove to protect Iowa prairies. Her accomplishments were not easy to achieve because she was a woman and a pioneer in her field. Dr. Ada Hayden has inspired many others to follow in her footsteps and do today what she did more than 64 years ago. Congratulations to Ellen. Sid wrote about Nancy Mara Hill, Iowa's first woman doctor, and she had this to say. Quote, as a Civil War nurse, so we're going back a ways, as a Civil War nurse, Nancy Maria Hill impacted many lives. With the help of other doctors and nurses, Nancy Hill saved soldiers wounded in battles near Washington, D.C. She was assigned to Ward F and tended to many soldiers by dressing their wounds and caring for them. In addition to her work at the hospital, she risked her own life in caring for soldiers in the battlefield. She showed, she showed how to be brave, and she wanted the best for others. Because of this experience, she attended the University of Michigan, and was one of the only, co which at the time was one of the only colleges to accept women. At the age of 41, she graduated with a medical degree. Uh, her choice to be one of the first women to become a doctor paved the way for the rest of her life. She always gave everything she had to people, even if she didn't know them. Congratulations to Sid. I just want to add from my previous job at Des Moines University, today enrollment in medical school is about 50% female. For veterinary medicine at Iowa State, it's about 80% female. See, it just takes pioneering women to, to open up the path, right? Lead the way. Connor wrote this about Stephanie Langstreet, principal of PCM Middle School, who also is here today. Quote, Stephanie Langstreet, our, our, our principal at PCM Middle School, survived lung cancer, probably because from the probably caused by the harmful gas radon. Mrs. Langstreet has shown great character and courage. As a survivor of lung cancer, she is trying to do something for the state of Iowa. Brave, trustworthy, caring, and courageous are the words that describe her. Ms. Langstreet is what the people of Iowa need as an example of a good citizen. Stephanie Langstreet should be written into history for her efforts to have all schools tested and mitigated for radon. Congratulations, Connor. Emma had this to say about Ola Babcock Miller, founder of the Iowa State Patrol and one of the first four women to be inducted into our Iowa Women's Hall of Fame. Quote, saddened and motivated by the highway death of a good friend's son, Ola Babcock Miller began to advocate tirelessly for uniformed state road patrol. Enforcement was not enough, the Des Moines Tribune reporter Lil Lillian McLaughlin wrote in 1975. Iowa women ahead of their time was that article. She spoke constantly throughout the state, driving home the gospel of safe and sane driving. 
Miller initiated the patrol on August 1, 1935 by organizing a group of 15 motor vehicle inspectors who helped reduce the Iowa um, highway accidents and by stopping violators. Congratulations to Emma. Nisha wrote about her vision teacher, T Trina Erickson, who is with us and who we introduced just shortly ago. Uh, Trina uh, should be written into history, according to Nisha, and here's what she had to say. Quote, I think that Trina Erickson should be written, written into history because she is an amazing vision instructor. A vision instructor is someone who teaches visually impaired students Braille, including the Braille alphabet and Braille contractions. She also teaches students how to use a Braille note, which is a small and portable computer that you can carry anywhere and use for your writing and email and schoolwork. Students also learn how to use closed circuit television, a Braille writer, a dome magnifier, and other technology. It is good to learn Braille and how to use it, how to use these devices when you are a kid. When you are grown, your memory doesn't work as well and it's harder to learn. Isn't that the truth? She went on to say that Trina is a remarkable teacher and makes me feel like I can do anything. I can even do things sighted people can't do, like taking notes they can't read. I think all visually impaired people could do anything they desire and achieve their goals if they had a teacher like Trina. That's why she should be part of Iowa history. Congratulations, Nisha. Ryan had this to say about Kathleen Schweitzer, Catherine Schweitzer, the first woman to legally enter and run the Boston Marathon. Quote, sometimes when you are fighting for rights, things are slow to change. But other times, one event or even one picture can change history. On that day in the 1967 Boston Marathon, Catherine Schweitzer said, why not? And she forever changed running. Because of Catherine Schweitzer's determination, I and other girls around the world are able to enter and run races today. That is why I think everyone should know how Catherine Schweitzer's journey paved the way for women's rights through running. When Catherine Schweitzer first started running, people thought women could not handle the strain of running a marathon. But when she finished, she had proved them wrong. Catherine Schweitzer was the first woman to legally enter and run in the Boston Marathon. She is important to me because I love to run. Thanks to her efforts, I could run a marathon today. She opened doors and led the way for many women and runners around the world. Her example of hard work and dedication continues to motivate me to pursue what I believe in. Congratulations, Ryan. Lindy wrote this about Mildred Wirt Benson, Iowa Women's Hall of Fame inductee, and the woman who created the character Nancy Drew. Quote, while, I was still studying her, while she was still studying for her master's, Mildred was hired by Edward Straitmeyer to be his ghostwriter. He wanted her to bring to life the details, detailed plot lines and write young adult mysteries, the first of which was titled The Secret of the Old Clock. Mildred took on the project without the faintest notion that it would become such a hit. Sitting in front of her typewriter, she birthed the title character of the series, Nancy Drew, and shaped Nancy into a refreshing role model for girls across the nation. This young author not only went on to write 23 of the first 30 novels in the original Nancy Drew series, but she also published over 100 books of her own. In spite of her characters, she tried in the spirit of her characters, she also tried her own hand in piloting archaeology and adventuring. Mildred was truly an honorable woman and deserves more than she was ever rewarded. Without her, Nancy Drew could not be the exemplary young lady she is today and have had not have had a tremendous impact on the history of literature and the lives of women. Congratulations, Lindy.